I must make the Toto School proud. Hello, people that watch car reviews on the internet. Welcome to this all new 2023 Honda Civic Type R. I absolutely adore the previous generation FK8 Type R and now I have the new one for you. So we're gonna get it up in the air, nerd out in the tech specs, see what differs with this new FL5 generation, and then go give it some beans. Such a pretty car. Oh, what is it? Oh, the tow hook must be behind there. Look at the arrow on this car. This is incredible. This is like a supercar, but front wheel drive. Look at these itty bitty little like vortex generator looking fins. I know it's probably not what they are, but they're still neat. Some of you may not be a fan of the triple tip exhaust system, but I personally, it's grown on me. If you look just up inside here, you can see the little actuator assembly, just pre-center muffler, which is part of the active exhaust. The center one is what opens and closes to get louder or quieter. The FL5 Type R has a multi-link rear suspension, all of which is constructed out of steel, except for the knuckle that is aluminum. That's stamped steel at that, nothing tubular. Rear anti-sway bar measures in at approximately 20 and a half-ish millimeter. Also, it is a solid rear anti-sway bar. It's paired with a set of adaptive dampers manufactured by ZF, surprisingly enough. This 11th generation Honda Civic Type R weighs in at 3,188 pounds, and because it's front wheel drive, it has a 62 to 38 front to rear weight distribution. Whoa. Oh, it's hairy plastic. I usually bash manufacturers for choosing cardboard over plastic, but I don't know what the hell this is. It's like plat plaid board. It also has lots of heat insulation around the center mid pipe, which I must measure. All stainless, by the way. 60 millimeter diameter mid pipe. Honda Senkai. Jeez. One, two, three, four, five little mufflers. Five <laughs> tiny ones all throughout. Pretty tight accessing above the subframe back here. I mean, you can still get to the downpipe hardware, but also worth noting, this right here is your pinch weld. That is the width of the side skirt. This thing gained over an inch of width in the front track over the previous gen and 0.75 inches wider in the rear. Front suspension wise, the FL5 utilizes a dual access McPherson strut style design. Everything is made out of aluminum up front though. Super stout in construction too. I mean, look at the size of that ball joint. That thing's huge for just being a Civic. And again, just like the rear, you have those ZF active dampers as well as this little plastic shield to direct air towards your brake. Up above my head, which you cannot see, but you'll have to take my word for it, is the only transmission available with the Civic Type R, thankfully. And that is the in-house designed six-speed manual transmission with an auto rev match feature that you can turn on or off. Has a single mass flywheel, a helical LSD, and a 3.842 final drive ratio. That's high class. I use aluminum for the splash shield under the engine. A nice thick plastic one, also with aluminum riveted to it back here underneath the subframe. Oh, access for your, draining your oil right there. That's easy to get to. And a finger holder. It's kind of neat that there's a little cutout right here around the flex pipe on your downpipe. Also, you can see part of the dog bone mount inside there in those vents. No way. That is so smart. It's got a replaceable little adhesive vinyl shield protecting this lower plastic air dam. So that way if it gets scraped up, it just scrapes up the replaceable part. It's like a tear away for a helmet. Again, with the crazy attention to aero detail, look at these tiny little ridges right here to direct air up. It's time for the braking test. No one behind me. Ready? Ooh. Wow, that was a really short distance. Great brakes, great tires. Superb. That braking was just made possible thanks to a set of 350 millimeter or 13.8 inch two piece front rotors with a set of four piston monoblock Brembo calipers. 
The wheels, they've gone down now to a 19. The previous FK8 had a 20, and I really wasn't a fan of that. These are a 19 by 9.5 wrapped in a 265 30 Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tire. High five. It's got two 65s on this thing. That is so wide. Well, that's actually kind of interesting. The valve stem, metal of course, comes out of the center of the barrel and then protrudes sideways to the cap. This vent right here in the front bumper is for brake cooling. Remember those little shields I showed you earlier when we were looking at suspension? This is where the airflow comes through. And these massive vents on the front fender, Yep, they are functional as well. Out back, things get a little bit smaller with a single piston floating caliper, a 12 inch or 305 millimeter rotor. And the wheel and tire, same size as you get up front. In the name of science, I am now going to give this thing the beans. First, I must conduct the bolstering assessment and go. Oh, perfect. Perfect bolstering assessment. While this does have auto climate control and this really nice vent that goes across the center of the dash on these 11th gen Civics, I'm a big fan of this. It does not have any heat, ventilation, massage, or any of that extra crap on these seats. They're purpose built for a reason. As far as drive modes go, I have a little toggle over here in the center that says drive mode. You can go from comfort, which also changes your gauge cluster to match, to sport, to individual, which you can configure what systems you want and how you want them by, well, f I didn't mean to do that. You can configure how you want each individual setting to be yourself. From engine steering, suspension, engine sound, rev match, and gauge cluster. Or you can select this guy right here, plus R. Which the gauge cluster in the plus R mode, it looks like a Honda S2000's gauge cluster. And also these little dots, that is also a little indicator of when to shift. And on top of all that, this also has this app in the infotainment system called Honda Log R, which monitors all the performance parameters while you're driving this thing on a track. There's all kinds of uh, telemetry and data and neat stuff in here that you can play around with. I love that they have this. This just makes a car so much more fun. And the best way I can summarize all these different ways that it scores your driving, it just, it's like having a cup of water in your cup holder and you don't want to spill it because then you'll ruin the tofu. Essentially what this does, it utilizes multiple sensors throughout the car and it will monitor performance for acceleration, braking, turning, straightaways, and it's like overall G performance in different directions. So I'm gonna make sure it's in plus R mode and uh, I'll give this thing a little assistance. Let it eat. Ready? No wheel spin, come on. Ah, wheel spin. I was trying to avoid that. This thing rips, dude. That's good. Man, this thing is quick. Even off the line for being front wheel drive doesn't matter. Ooh. Well, that's functional. It's pretty light hood. Satisfactory. Wow, that is like super functional. What is Captain Jack Sparrow's favorite car? It's a Civic Type R. <laughs> Underneath the hood of this 2023 Honda Civic Type R is the K20 C1, which has been slightly revised for this new FL5. It is an all aluminum dual overhead cam turbocharged four cylinder that produces 315 horsepower at 6,500 RPM, 310 pound-feet of torque from 2,600 to 4,000 RPM. However, there is a caveat to that because they are sandbagging like crazy. According to Honda, they did a hub dyno on one of these cars and it put down 326 horsepower and 359 pound-feet of torque on a hub dyno. That's substantially more than what Honda quotes this at. Oh, the battery looks cozy in its little blanket. One of the main sources of the added power for this new Type R lies right underneath this heat shield for the mono scroll turbo. That operates at a peak 23.3 PSI, and it has a brand new eight blade billet compressor wheel that's both beefier and lighter than 
the one on the previous FK8s K20C. Oh, look at that crazy rainbow effect on that pipe right there. I think maybe that's for the EGR, possibly. Digging in a little bit deeper on the engine itself, it has cast iron cylinder liners, a forged steel crankshaft, crack separated and heat forged rods, aluminum pistons with oil squirters on those pistons as well, a 9.8 to 1 compression ratio, an 86 by 85.9 millimeter bore in stroke. Moving up into the head, it has IV tech, variable timing control on both intake and exhaust, as well as traditional VTEC yo on the exhaust side of things. That's where it goes like, like really loud. That was my, never asked me to do a VTEC impersonation again. Maintenance wise goes, this engine bay on the Type R really is not that crammed. There's plenty of room to access stuff all around the sides. And if you go back here by the firewall, the camera down there, you can see that dual pinion variable ratio electronic power steering rack in the intake manifold. It's plastic right there. This charge pipe's kind of neat looking. It's aluminum, but it has this weird plastic cover that says Type R on it on top. And then unlike the Type R's of yesteryear that had aluminum wrinkle finished red valve covers on those B series, uh, the K series has a plastic red cover, some simulated plastic carbon. The insulation back here says spree gluten-free Nerf football. Radiators, good size, spans almost the entire width of the core port, only has a single fan attached to the backside. You can see the front mount intercooler right here through the front grill. Just above the Type R logo, there's a little scoop that dumps out and goes into this tube for the air box. It is time to go drive this thing. And we're off. This car is magic. Now, the best way to show this car's capabilities is on a racetrack, just plain and simple. I mean, this thing set a new record on Suzuka circuit in Japan, two minutes and 23 seconds and some milliseconds. Uh, last year with a pre-production car, but on back roads, it's still absolutely magnificent. The suspension in the plus R mode is stiff, like real stiff. And I like that about it. I don't know. I don't, I don't care. I don't want my performance car to be comfy also. I just want it to do its job and this thing does its job well. Oh my God, there's so much grip coming out of a corner with this thing. That is wild. It is insane the stuff this car is capable of doing and I don't have the vocabulary to relay that to you because I'm not actually a journalist. The auto rev match feature is nice but I just keep doing it myself because the pedal placement in this car is fantastic. I, they're, everything is fantastic driving dynamic wise on this thing. Toto School proud. Ah, oh, so good. Nobody that buys a Civic Type R gives a shit about their backseat passengers. Plain and simple, and it shows. There's not even an armrest back here. You just got two plastic holes to stick some drinks. There's nowhere to charge a smart device because you don't need to. You need to focus on not vomiting from what the person in this seat right here is doing. That looks like it's 3D printed and I like it. It's got some red seat belts in the rear also. That's a tiny cute little window. The interior is not over the top, but there is little tiny touches like this red LED light that goes in the door panel. Suede Alcantara all over the door cards. Man, they really cleaned things up back here on the 11th gen. It's so much more mature and shapely looking back here, just as an ass should be. As far as stowability goes, Yes, you can still shove things in here. This thing's neat. It looks like something you'd wrap around your, your waist in the gym. Well, there's another one of those shady boys up here. This says Honda Pez on it. Type R has a rear wiper, love that. I haven't tried out any of the other modes yet, so I'm going to take it out of plus R. And that's comfort. Oh, I noticed that immediately, actually. <laughs> the entire time I've had this car, I've just had it in the plus R mode. You don't feel all the tiny little imperfections in the road anymore. I mean, this thing is like hyper crisp and it's in plus R. If I had to find some faults though, one of the things that I feel some manufacturers kind of do better and that's the piped in sounds coming into the cabin. I don't really feel like you need that. It's not a deal breaker to have that completely disabled in this thing. I 
let me hear the car El Natural, please. Also, the fact that you can only get this in a five-door hatch and not a three-door hatch. I don't know why we have this obsession with having vehicles that have way more space than we'll probably ever use. I mean, a car like this having a back seat with two extra doors is the equivalent of having a house with a three-car garage and not parking any vehicles in it and just filling it full of junk all the time. Also something I wish they would offer is an option at the factory to select either this black colored wheel that you have or have them finished in championship white because that just, it's quintessential type R. The previous generations you could have your white type R with the white wheels. The placement of the rear wing is perfect for visibility. You just see the subtle little shadow at the very top of the window in your rear view mirror and that's the wing. It doesn't block or impede your vision whatsoever. For just over $40,000, there's a lot of good performance cars in this price range, but this one really kind of stands out in my mind just because of the fact that these things damn near appreciate after you buy them. They hold their value so well, and if you look at the Integra Type R that we got 20 something years ago now, and what those are going for in clean condition, this, this car is a steal in that aspect. It is now time to give this thing some scores. First up is the bean score. This is the assessment of the feeling you get in your gut when you give it the beans. And 2023 Civic Type R is getting a rating of... Next is the cookie score, the assessment of value, and at just over $43,000 out the door, this thing gets a rating of... Followed by the wrench score, the assessment of ease of maintenance. And it's getting a rating of... Followed by a squid score, the assessment of handling. FL5 Type R gets a rating of. <laughs> Lastly is the Penguin score, the assessment to how much I personally like a vehicle. And the new Type R gets a rating of. I 100% would buy one of these. I considered buying one instead of my Bronco when I had ordered that, the previous gen. But it's so difficult to get your hands on these cars and the dealers that have them want to jack the prices way up. And to me, that just loses the appeal of buying a car altogether if dealerships are going to try to rip people off by price gouging. So the car itself though, phenomenal. And if you are able to get one, don't ever get rid of it because it's just... It's a front wheel drive supercar, plain and simple. I'd rather have one of these than a supercar, honestly. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. I will see you soon with another. Bye.